On this week's boiler tip, we're going to take a quick look at differential pressure transmitters and how to keep uh, the lines clear and make sure that they're functional. Um, on a differential pressure transmitter, what makes it a differential transmitter is that we're reading two different pressures. One sensing line measures the tank height in water column and in addition has the static pressure of the pressure vessel on it. So on a deaerator, we may be running 5 PSI and then we're going to add the height of that water column to that and that's what it's sensing on the positive side. Now because the vessel's pressurized, we have to have a reference pressure to compare to um, what it's sensing in order to establish an accurate reading. Otherwise, as the pressure changed in the vessel, so would our reading. Now the reference leg on a steam uh, system is typically going to have steam present in the vessel. So this reference leg is going to fill with condensate um, and that's basically unavoidable. So the height of the water in the reference leg um, is factored in and we're presuming that that piping has water in it. Now if I start getting erratic readings, I may need to blow down the reference leg or the sensing leg to ensure that those are clear. Um, the sensing leg is simple because it's connected to the, the flooded tank or below the water level. It's going to normalize as soon as I close that valve. So let me demonstrate that. I've got a reading of negative 18.6. If I flush that leg, I'm going to go to the maximum scale reading on that in that direction. If I close that drain, it's already still full of water and it's going to normalize at that same value. So there we are. We're back at 18.6. 18.4, about the same ballpark. Now, if I blow down the reference leg, the issue is that it's not going to refill automatically because where the pipe connects to the vessel, there's steam, not water. So if I blow down the reference leg, I'm going to have to make an effort to refill it. Now, on a deaerator, because we're operating at a fairly low pressure, I may be able to just isolate that line and, and fill it with a funnel and a bucket of water. But on a boiler that could be operating at 100 PSI or 300 PSI or who knows what, that's not always practical. So what we have to keep in mind is that if we remove the water and it fills with steam, um, that steam can condense and refill it automatically. So in general, we're going to put our loop control in manual so we don't get a wild swing of operation. But once this line is flushed, we can allow that to refill over time. Now, if we want to accelerate that, we can wipe the outside of this with a wet rag. And basically, every drop of water that boils off the outside is forming a roughly equivalent amount of water inside. So we can basically fill this by pouring water on the outside, which is kind of funny. Uh, we can accelerate that. Um, I like to use a spray bottle because I can actually see where the steam stops and the water begins and I can track the level within that tubing as it's filled. On many boilers at the top of this piping we'll have a condensate pot which is really just an enlarged section of piping or a special fitting that will really facilitate condensation to aid in it refilling and B, because it's a larger diameter, if there's some water loss, um, it's, it's going to isolate it more particularly to that level if it's due to a change in boiler pressure or something like that. So a condensate pot works as a condensate generator and helps stabilize that if we've got fluctuations in boiler pressure. So I guess to make a long story short, it's simple to flush the sensing line. But if we're going to flush the reference leg, we, we should have a plan of action in place.